Hello, my biology class. This is my first online uh, PowerPoint for you. We're going to cover the digestive system, moving on from some other things that we've talked about. And I just wanted to, I figured it'd be fun to start off with the digestive system, seeing how we all eat a ton and don't really pay attention to what we're eating. And so I thought we'd cover this, just give you a basic understanding of how your digestive system works. Digestion, when you hear that, you, a lot of people just think their stomachs and intestines, but for any animal, actually, digestion starts at the mouth and then finishes once it's left to the body through the anus. And actually, we actually cook our food. Cooking actually serves to break down some of the proteins and other things that are in our food, and it makes it easier for us to actually digest them. So, yeah, kind of an interesting thing for cooking plus it makes the food taste better anyway especially if it's slathered in lots of and lots of butter all right so this is your digestive tract your oral cavity starts right here that's basically a big fancy word for mouth all right it travels down the esophagus which is this tube into your stomach from your stomach it travels into the small intestine and there's a lot more of it than just those two things and then it travels into the large intestine and then out if you looked at it on a real picture or close to it, it does this. This is your small intestine and it weaves around and around and around until it enters the large intestine, makes its way around, and then finally comes out there. All right. So on your notes there, the wave-like movement that allows food to pass through your digestive tract is called peristalsis. Peristalsis is actually a wave-like movement where the muscles, this is your muscle right here inside your intestine, and the muscles will contract at a specific point and it pushes the food down a little bit. Then it will contract here to push it a little farther, and it just keeps contracting to push the food down as it goes. If you look inside your intestine here, the outer layer is called the serosa layer. There is a layer of muscle right here, and the muscles actually go in multiple directions. And then you have a submucosal layer and then the mucus layer here. And your food would actually sit in this area right here. The mouth is actually the first stage of digestion. We chew and chew and chew in order to help break down our food. One of the biggest problems we have as people is we don't chew our food long enough. Uh, a lot of times we take a bite, chew a couple times, and then swallow. You need to actually chew, and it will break your food down better, make it easier for your stomach to digest. If you're having digestive issues, uh, try chewing your food a little longer. Will it fix everything? Eh, probably not, but it might. So try chewing your food a little longer. Chewing actually mixes saliva into our food. And saliva is not just a liquid. It has proteins, specifically enzymes, that will target specific molecules. Uh, amylase is one of those enzymes that's in your mouth. Amylase is the reason why you can put a sucker in your mouth and it will dissolve eventually in your mouth. It's the reason a candy cane dissolves in your mouth. All of those things like cotton candy that break down in your mouth without you having to swallow them, those are all sugars and they're broken down by amylase. So you should have on your notes, uh, oh, for peristalsis, do you have control over it? No, you don't, all right? But you should have all the way down through one, two, three, four, five, six lines of notes. Now the tongue helps in swallowing. When you've chewed your food up, that food is then referred to as a bolus or bolus. I don't care how you say that. And the tongue actually moves that bolus into an area behind the mouth called the pharynx. Now, if you look, this is your lips. Your tongue is actually rooted down here, but this is the part you see right here. So your food would travel into this area here. And from this area, it, the pharynx has to split into two different spots. One spot is the esophagus and the other spot is the larynx. And there's this flap here that keeps 
the food from going into the larynx because the larynx leads to your uh, lungs while your esophagus goes to your stomach. All right, this is kind of a diagram of it. This would be your trachea here, all right? And then your esophagus is here and your esophagus travels down into your stomach while your trachea leads down and goes into your uh, lungs. I can speak today, I swear. All right, this is an actual video of a person swallowing. Let's check this out. So there's his food. Chewing it up. Yum, yum, yum. Chew, chew, chew. Now swallow. Woo, gross. <laughs> He's gonna do it again. There's some more. Ew. You can see it coming down right there. Takes a drink of water. Yum, yum. Maybe that's Dr. Pepper and that's why it tastes so good. But do you see this flap right here that closes to prevent the food from going down into here? If you drink too quickly and you start coughing and coughing and coughing, it's because it went down the wrong track. Just a front view of it. You can actually see the collarbones right here. These are your lungs. This is the esophagus traveling down into the stomach. There's your heart beating right there. Just some pretty cool stuff. All right, pretty cool stuff. If you want, you've got this saved onto your PowerPoint. You can watch it later. All right, so the esophagus travels from your pharynx down to your stomach, and uh, it uses peristalsis to actually move it, move things down. Da, 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 da. Oh yeah, so when food arrives at the stomach, there is an opening that has to open and close, and that is actually any kind of open and closed ring in your body is referred to as a sphincter. So in this case, those muscle rings are sphincters and they open and close as needed. You have no control over these ones, most of them anyway. There are actually six major ones just in the digestive tract alone. The sphincter at the top of your stomach connecting the esophagus is called the gastroesophageal sphincter or it can also be referred to as the cardiac sphincter. And then if stomach acid, that should be exits the stomach. I'll fix that later. And goes up into the esophagus. It actually burns the tissue there and that is called heartburn. The actual term for it is called acid reflux. And that is because the esophagus is close to the heart. And so when the acid actually leaves the stomach and lands on the esophagus, it causes the esophagus to get burned by the acid and the nerves, your heart is right around here. And so your, it feels like your heart is having issues when in fact it's your esophagus that is causing the problem. And so that's why I refer to it as heartburn, but it's not your heart at all. All right, so your stomach starts right here. Oh, let's go back for a second here. Your stomach, the sphincter we talked about is right here. If your, your stomach kind of tries to climb out here, we'll talk about this in a minute, but that's called a hernia. And I just wanted you to have a picture of it here real quick, all right? So the stomach secretes gastric juices and the main gastric enzyme is called pepsin. And I don't know why Pepsi named themselves Pepsi. You don't wanna name yourself after an, an enzyme. I'm sure they didn't, but man, that's all I can think about. I can't drink Pepsi anymore. And once that material gets broken down inside the stomach, it passes through another sphincter right here into the small intestine. Food will leave your stomach 
anywhere from two to six hours. So it's actually kind of false for people to say, oh, I ate something and a half an hour later it's causing bad problems in my intestine. You know, no. In order for your large intestine to have issues, it's something you ate quite a while back, all right? And this is what I was talking about called a hiatal hernia. You have a muscle here called a diaphragm. That diaphragm separates the chest cavity from the abdominal cavity here. And in this case, the stomach, at least in part, has climbed up through the diaphragm here. And so when the esophagus comes down, it empties food into this tiny little portion, and then that food has to be squeezed again through the, the, the diaphragm into the stomach. Now, sometimes nothing happens with this. People can have it and not even know, and other people will have this and have to have surgery to correct it. It all depends on how it impacts your life and ability to swallow food. And so your diaphragm actually even helps keep acid from coming back up into this and so this actually can cause some serious issues there before we go into the small intestine actually i think i want to stop right there yeah i do want to stop right here all right so let's go back for one second the stomach when it produces food and it empties into the small intestine the food that it has digested is called Chyme, C-H-Y-M-E. Let's see if I've got it here. Yeah, right there. That chyme is passed a little bit at a time. He, that rhymes. Chyme, time, rhyme. Okay, I'm such a dork. All right, into the small intestine. And we'll cover the small intestine as we go. It will be your next video. Uh, if you have any questions, 